Hey everyone, big week uh, here at the church. We got the Leprechaun Feast. Uh, it's happening this Sunday, which is March 17th. Uh, it'll be in the evening, details and email. Uh, we would love for you to bring your friends out. This is a great opportunity for us to get together, to enjoy each other. Uh, you can bring a green snack. That was in the uh, last week's email uh, that you are able to help provide something green to eat or drink. It's St. Patrick's Day. I heard there'll be a, a guest appearance by a Leprechaun. Uh, we're going to do some fun games, do a couple creative things. And then I'm going to share just a little bit, especially if your friends are here, which is going to be awesome. I'm going to share a little bit about St. Patrick why we have the holiday, but lead it back to the gospel of Jesus, because that's what we do. Uh, we are disciples of Jesus who want to see disciples made, so the gospel needs to go out. Uh, so this is an opportunity for fun and fellowship and games and food, but we're going to leverage it uh, also to declare the gospel. No bait or switch here. Let your friends know. Like We're going to have fun, but we'll also have a short time where we will... Uh, open up the Bible together. Bingo dingo. All right, so tonight we are going to read from Acts. So grab your Bible. Grab it. Hopefully you don't have a long string that has it all tied shut. Probably one of my kids learning how to tie knots. Messing with their dad. Uh, we're going to look in Acts chapter 16. There's actually three stories. This is a little bit of a longer section for you to read together in your group, but I want you to read it all because, again, these are the words that bring life. These are the words uh, that will penetrate our hearts and take dead people and raise them back to life through the power of the Holy Spirit. So read them. Tonight, you're going to read uh, Acts chapter 16. You're going to read from verse 11 all the way, verse 11 all the way to the end of the chapter. Go ahead and read it now. Now that you've been able to read this section, did you see that there's three distinct different narrative stories that are happening in those verses? There's three stories, but what I want you to see is how these three stories are all interwoven into one great story. So you have uh, these three different people uh, in the stories. You have Lydia. She is the maker of purple cloth. She probably is making pretty decent money. Uh, she obviously has people working for her. So you have her in one story. She comes to saving grace, so she follows after Jesus. Her whole household ends up following Jesus. Uh, that's one story, narrative. You have an additional narrative of a demon-possessed girl who is a slave. So let's look at that for just a second. You have Lydia, who's maybe wealthy or hardworking, but has some money and has people under her. You have the next story of a slave girl who is owned by people. She has nothing, right? She's demon-possessed, lost, just like Lydia was. She was lost, but a different economic status, right? A business owner and a slave. Uh, so you have that narrative, and you can see Paul gets annoyed, and it actually leads to... Uh, Paul and Silas being imprisoned. So this is a, a, an, in, an integral part of the story because we go from this huge celebration of Lydia um, converting to Christianity into this next narrative of this demon-possessed girl being set free from her bondage to them being, uh, and they're jailed for it. They're beaten, right? Like, this girl is delivered and her owners are more concerned about their money, money, more concerned about their well-being than her well-being. They're more concerned about their profit 
than her health or her growth. So you have, there's two of those narratives. Then you go into your third narrative. Again, all of these being interwoven. I, I hope you saw that as you read it. Like they're distinct, yet they, there's a flow to this. They're all connected and, and there's a bigger story happening. You have your third narrative with the, the jailer. While they're in jail, you can see uh, what all has happened there. They could have escaped. Paul and Silas could have ran out, but they're in the party like, hey, oh, hey, like raising the roof, you know, singing songs, they're enjoying life. No matter where they find themselves, they have great joy and they're able to celebrate knowing that they are part of God's bigger plan. This may be the third story in this section of scripture, but their mindset is that there's a bigger story that's playing out. And no matter where they find themselves, whether it's in great celebration and joy and people are coming to know who Christ is, or they find themselves getting beaten and drug out into the town square, or they're in a prison and they're in this rat infested, nasty, dark, damp dungeon, Wherever they find themselves, it is God's greater narrative to declare his goodness to the world. They can celebrate in that. My concern, uh, you know, as I read this is, would I, uh, would I be okay? Would I be content and joyful in these circumstances? So much of what we do in our culture is to really provide a safety net for ourselves, uh, whether it's our health or our future. Think of our finances. Think of how we do insurance. We have life insurance. We have car insurance. We have health insurance. We have all of these safety nets to provide a level of comfort. And I I'm, I'm, don't want you to hear me the wrong way today. And, and I'm not saying that they're wrong. Uh, being prepared is, is oftentimes a good thing. But if our focus and our attention and a lot of what we do is bent towards our comfort and our safety, it may be detrimental to our growth and our maturity. Uh, I don't know. Do you see Paul and Silas and, and some of these believers in the early church, do you see themselves being overly concerned with their safety or their comfort or their preparedness for the future. That's, that's a big one we'll have to wrestle through and struggle with. Um, it's definitely something to pray about and sort out. I think we do have a responsibility to our families, but at the same time, our identity is first in Jesus Christ. And so we have a responsibility to Christ and what he's commanded and called us to. These are bigger questions. Uh, you may not even have health or life insurance or maybe not even car insurance yet. You're just a teenager. You're not quite there yet. But you may want to ask mom and dad what that's like. Um, is that a struggle for them? Is it, is it something that they feel is necessary and urgent um, for living? That might be a tough conversation to have, but I'll, I'll throw that out there. You can have it. Um, it's something I have to wrestle through because I'm old. Do you see all the gray hair in my chinny chin chin, right? So I, it's something I think through. Anyways, uh, you're going to get to see a video here of my friends, uh, DeWitt and Sonny Moffitt, and they get to share a little bit about how God spoke to them this week through the scriptures, again, by the Holy Spirit, and uh, God just gave them some insight on what uh, this narrative looks like, what it means. And so I want you to see uh, my friends. Um, you have one who's really faithful, who she didn't know everything about the Lord, but her heart was in the right place. And then you have another one who knew about him, but her heart was not in the right place. And then you have one who just needed hope, who was just like, okay, this is the only, this, this is the only route I can think to take because my world has come to an end and so has my life. So I'm just gonna cut my losses and, and just go. 
So you got three unique people mm -hmm. and how God was in control of every situation and how he placed Paul and you know they had their own agenda but God said you know I got my agenda mm -hmm. so we can think of where we want to go but in the ultimate end God is going to put you where he wants you he's going to orchestrate just what he wants done done mm -hmm. and Lydia is my girl <laughs> she's my girl she um I just, it's just a lot of that, the whole message, and I'm gonna listen to it again because it was so much to take in. I missed a lot of things, but. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Keep talking. Oh. <laughs> oh, um, but yeah, and, and how people can be so hard hearted and know who the Lord is, but yet won't have anything to do with them. Mm -hmm. And how so many times I was just listening to the news and they um, family life and they said that they had the survivor who jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge here not too long ago and he survived and he's going around giving his testimony and the first thing he said yeah I had an agenda because I thought that this was the only hope I had and he said God let him survive where so many people had died and now he's giving his testimony of what God has done in his life because he felt hopeless. So we always have hope. It's just where your hope, where is your hope gonna lie in? Right. I love that Paul gets annoyed. <laughs> that shows that, his, his, I think that was supposed <laughs> to be in there. You hear that teenager? Yep. Paul got annoyed. Yes, that, uh, he wasn't perfect. None of us are. He right. even have anger issues, mm -hmm. you know, because that was a good one. He did. He got annoyed. Like, how long did that take, though? You know, when you read that scripture, it says that she did that for days. <laughs> but, like, look at his grace. Look how compassionate he was. Like, yeah. This woman followed them around. She uh, was shouting these things at them, and for days they put up with it, for days. But then there was that turning point, and he got annoyed. And I wonder what was going through his mind for those days. Was it, um, oh, I'm a just, if this woman don't get away from me, you know, because he was he was annoyed. That's what, I couldn't imagine going through days like that. But how he still allowed the Spirit to work in him to give her, um, you know, he, he, didn't, he didn't latch out at her. Mm -hmm. You know, he showed he was annoyed, but yet and still he was <laughs> godly about mm -hmm. it. And it all led to, I mean, that's, that's what fascinates me. It mm -hmm. all led to them getting beat, drug out into the city, yeah. and them put in prison, which takes us to the next narrative. Mm -hmm. To give hope to the hopeless, they had to go through... The beating, the ridicule, the hard, difficult narrative of that story. Like, that's how it works sometimes. Mm -hmm. And we have to ask ourselves, I think especially in the American churches, are we, are we good with that? Mm, yeah, are we going to be, are, are you content to go through these, these trials mm -hmm. alone, you know, allowing the Lord to do what he does best? Mm -hmm. are, you, are you okay with that? Yeah, do, or do we run from our discomfort? Right. Do we run from our trials? Know that God uses them. Like, mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. where, that's why they could go and sing some hymns in the jail. Yeah, right? they was partying. Yeah, they're like, <laughs> we're in the jail cell and it's okay. Yeah. And then they get to share the gospel with people. And they're <laughs> like, this is where we're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We get it. Be beat beat us again and that's Throw and us in another jail that's only the spirit that's the spirit in them that's the whole only the holy spirit can give somebody that kind of joy that kind of one to praise they didn't just got beat with rocks mm -hmm. <laughs> i mean beat and here it is they throwing a party in the jail and it's like only the spirit can do that to someone you know, so it's like bring, bring, like you said, beat me again, <laughs> throw beat me, me again. <laughs> you don't hear that, right? Every day, do you? No, 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 you don't. Never say, come on, okay, I'm ready for the next challenge. Bring it on, because I know when it's all said and done, God is gonna get the glory, and I'm gonna be for the better for it. Mm -hmm. So bring the challenge on. Mm -hmm. Bring it. <laughs> bring it. <laughs> bring it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Do anything that stood out to you in this? Um. I, I think that uh, probably the, that scene in the the, uh, the 
the cell <laughs> where most of us would be mm. ready to just give up on it. And they were able to keep their eyes on Christ. They were um, excited in the fact that they got beat for uh, uh, for his namesake, yeah. that they found themselves worthy for it. And they were able to uh, um, praise him in the midst of their circumstances. And the Lord turned that whole situation around. Mm -hmm. uh, that was that was powerful. I think that was really powerful. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. very good stuff. Yeah, I love that they. You like for Lydia, she gets it. And she goes right immediately. Yeah. Disciple making process begins. Yeah, for her. she goes right back. She didn't waste. Like, <laughs> Y'all are gonna hear something. Yeah, she, <laughs> she didn't waste no time. She was taking a lunch break. No. Time out. Y'all stop. Boil, you know, they boiled snails. That's how they got the, mm. the purple colors. They, they did snails, wow. and um, I think they even used, uh, we were researching it with our kids, mussels. So there's some sort of a, like a sea creature. You could smash them up and get a purple dye out of them. Really? But it's a real nasty process. Mm. And like, who, who wants to be that? Like, what do you do for living? For like <laughs> snails. <laughs> Only purple ones, though. Mm. The orange ones, the yellow ones, the green ones. No, we don't want that. We just, just the want purple the purple one. one. I'm a snail yeah. collector. Boiler smasher. Yeah, thanks. But she yeah. obviously thought it was good for profits because she kept good. doing it. She was, yeah, she was catching it. She in, was different. You know, those employees were like, yeah, we'll take a break. Right, <laughs> we'll right. Listen. I'll listen. Whatever you got, I'll listen. Right. And it happened there, and then it happened again with the jailer. You yeah. Know? The, I, the whole house gets to hear. Mm -hmm. Well, why is that? I don't think because I don't think it's because Paul was pushy. Right. I think because mm -hmm. the jailer's like, this is hope. Mm -hmm. They need this. They have to hear this. Let's go. You coming over. Like, we got to keep this going, mm -hmm. you know? And I often wonder, and I thought, God must have, he, he does what he does so often, prepares people's hearts ahead of time. And they don't even realize that this is what's going on until they look back later, you know, when they're in the midst of it, it's like God had to prepare their hearts ahead of time um, for this. Well, I, and you think about the uh, the jailer, he's, <laughs> you know, he he thinks that they're they're he's getting ready to kill himself. Yeah. Okay. Oh gosh. And Paul stops him and says, "What? We're still here." And he says, "Okay, what do I have to do to be saved?" <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I thought so, that was interesting too. He's like, I can't believe it. You gotta believe in God now, because here it is. This man getting ready to take himself out, and Paul said, "You could just hold, hold up. Wait a minute. We're get right the here." Sword away, bro. Yeah, yeah, and you know, can you imagine how the jailer must have been feeling? Mm -hmm. um, because if it was Paul being wicked, he could have just played deaf, you know, deaf, and just let this man go. But no. You don't have to do this. This is never the end of the, the situation. And I like what Pastor Todd said, that the jailer was looking for a permanent solution mm -hmm. for a temporary, temporary. situation. Temporary. I don't know what you're going through uh, in your life. I mean, I hear stories. Some of you do reach out to me. I walk with, with several of you. But I don't know all of your obstacles. Uh, I'm not always aware of... Uh, maybe some of the difficult struggles that you have in your life. I know many of you have uh, faced what it looks like to have a broken home. Um, divorce is real. And many of you have gone through it and have experienced it. And there's some real hurt there. Uh, there's some real struggles in sorting out what it looks like, what the new normal is in your life. Um, going to mom's house, going to dad's house. That's a real obstacle in many of your lives. For some of you, the obstacle might be depression and it might be anxiety. We live in uh, an area where depression is high. Erie has a high depression rate. I think it's because um, dreary Erie. I heard people say that when I first got a job and moved up this way. They're like, oh, you're going to dreary Erie. And I'm like, do you know things that I don't? You know, like uh, we don't get a lot of sunlight here and I think that does affect us physically and emotionally and mentally and uh, so you do have that they might be that may be your reality some of you have experienced some some real hurts in your relationships 
I'm talking boyfriend, girlfriend uh, kind of relationships. You've done things that uh, you knew weren't honoring to God. Uh, you've really been hurt by people. You've, you're shamed, you have regrets. Uh, and again, that's real. You may struggle in school. You may not be able to keep a job. I don't know what it is for you as a teenager. I, I feel like um, what the great rapper slash poet has said, mo money, mo problems. <laughs> Can you put that in a video? Because I just did. I, I think what it is, is as you get older, you experience sometimes bigger and more difficult problems. Uh, life is complicated. And we see for the jailer that it is really complicated. He did not live in an environment that was full of grace. We talked uh, last week about the two sides of the spectrum, legalism and license, and what that looks like and how it affects us as we go through life uh, when we've been brought up in either of those systems. Well, what I believe the, the jailer has seen is uh, grace and compassion and love. I, I feel like he doesn't live in that world, but Paul and Silas show that to him. They don't just declare the gospel of grace, the good news of Jesus Christ. They demonstrate it to him in that moment and what he experiences in that moment. Again, because he has a real struggle, a real obstacle that we don't want to uh, look past. He is without hope and he is ready to end his life because in his world, if you make a mistake, it's unacceptable and uh, he would have experienced the consequences of them getting out of the jail anyways. He would have been killed, he would have been executed. He doesn't know grace, he can't live in grace, but he experiences it and he hears it. And look at what happens, disciples are made. I wonder like, again, this is, I'm just speculating, this is just a thought. How many of his neighbors, relatives, kids, grandkids, hear the story of Pappy the Jailer? Oh, Pappy the Jailer, uh, you know, he, he should have died. He was gonna kill himself. He was at the end of his rope, but he was shown some extravagant grace and he heard the good news of Jesus Christ. How many generations did it ripple out? How many people and lives were affected and heard the gospel, heard the good news of Jesus, all because of grace that was demonstrated in a damp, musty cell, the gospel went out. We keep telling you the gospel doesn't end with you. It's not just for you, but it's for someone else. Here's how we're gonna close out tonight. We're gonna ask you to pray again for those individuals, for gospel conversations. Uh, pray for them, for those people by name, for the people group that you feel God is sending you to. Uh, maybe it's people very unlike you, but here, uh, in addition to that, also, anybody having gospel conversations, we're not here to beat you up, but we're here to ask you, to encourage you, to continue to pray for the opportunity, and then to, to really, as the Spirit provides it, to jump all over it and jump in, right? So have that conversation. Anybody have a gospel conversation this week? I'm praying for you. I'm looking forward to our time this Sunday when we get to do the little leprechaun feast, praying that you bring your friends so that the gospel can continue to go out. Love you guys. See you later.